closer to the truth you know as we have more and more people or more and more situations that we're seeing that um you have family members you have friends you have even mentors that you believe would actually be you know keeping calm during a bear market or keeping calm during the uncertainties that we're all dealing with or that we're all witnessing and um obviously things are proving different but all right guys i'm, I'm gonna be getting into like i said uh, Einstein's unified field theory now personally over here guys of course you already know what it is you pretty much know our sentiment you already know how we're coming since the first episode <clears throat> if you were able to catch uh, our first Ted's cave of mysteries we were discussing flat earth you know so I mean you can let me know what other crypto channel is discussing flat earth and then turn around and tell you about XRP you know what I mean so obviously guys I really hope you've been enjoying what we've been presenting to you guys and we want to keep on um <clears throat> uh, direct you guys to the truth so let's go ahead and get into it today you know I'm, I'm, I don't want to hold you guys up too long obviously because you have a great a great weekend uh prepared for you obviously you guys already know you get 24 7 blessings over here but it's really special that you guys are uh, checking in with us on this late night live stream now, right here, guys, I want to just just dive into it. This is going to be a different one. Obviously, I'm going to be linking in some biblical truths in this whole thing. But obviously, we could just come here together and really just talk about this, learn about this. And at the end of this whole thing, we'll be having a good discussion. Now, right here, y'all, Albert Einstein, what is unified field theory? So I'm going to be going over just, you know, some articles online. You know, so if you've never heard of this theory, if you've, you know, been wanting to know, just this could just be a little bit of a nice little, you know, educational time. Just sit back, relax. And we're definitely going to just hear my thoughts when it comes down to these unified field theory and really this whole theory of everything. So Albert Einstein coined the term unified theory, unified field theory, which describes any attempt to unify the fundamental forces of physics between elementary particles into a single theoretical framework. Einstein spent the latter part of his life searching for such a unified field theory, but as they say, he was unsuccessful. Now, I'll let you guys know, as I've dived into this thing, really learning about it, obviously it becomes so simple. The man was truly searching for God. He was searching for God's mind. If you can find out exactly what's on God's mind, everything else is just details. You know, so big shout out to for real Albert Einstein for what he's done. But the secular science field or the secular field obviously would say that he was unsuccessful in that. But in his pursuit in his latter years, obviously his predecessors and off of his research and everything, people have come up with, I guess, their own theories as well. So forces that have been unified in the past, seemingly different 
interaction fields or forces have been unified together. James Maxwell uh, successfully unified electricity and magnetism into electromagnetism in the 1800s. The field of quantum electrodynamics in the 40s successfully translated Maxwell's electromagnetism into the terms and mathematics of quantum mechanics, which we'll talk about a little briefly as well. Now, in the 60s and 70s, scientists successfully unified the strong nuclear interaction and weak nuclear interaction together with quantum electrodynamics to form the standard model of quantum physics. All right. So obviously, you know, with the words that we're saying, quantum, 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 truly taking that quantum leap, you know, um, to put it in layman's terms and to really keep it simple. It's almost like we're saying here a framework for everything that everything can come and unify together. And again, you already know where we're, where all of this is leading into. Uh, but the current problem with a fully unified field theory is in finding a way to incorporate gravity. Now, isn't that interesting that right now to actually find this unified field theory, you need to add gravity. Now, personally speaking over here, you guys, you know, if you want to know how we feel, if you're new to this channel, if you're just jumping in and trying to figure this whole thing out, we do receive from above. So we're not really just all about completely with science. Obviously, science has its place, but science really shows God's handiwork. That's really where we're coming from, really speaking fully. Uh, but this is what I was saying. There's different theories uh, that have attempted to unify quantum physics with the general relativity. Obviously, uh, uh, Einstein's uh, theory of relativity. So you have quantum gravity, string theory or M theory, loop quantum gravity, supersymmetry and of course the theory of everything uh so with that being said actually i do want to show you all yeah i do i want to show you guys uh this about theory of everything but check this out so they claim that the unified field theory is highly theoretical and to date there is no absolute evidence that is possible to unify gravity with the other forces now Personally speaking, like we're saying here, Einstein, out of all of the geniuses that you know, what's the first name that comes up? God honored his name throughout the ages. It isn't, you know, oh, that's a piccolo or all oh, you Rumsfeld. No, Einstein. So obviously God honored him throughout the time. But to really think about what we're saying here, that you're unable to find some kind of unified master theory, field theory to really obviously show God's omnipotence, but we can't add gravity. Because of gravity, now, now we can no longer unify things. So really interesting that, personally speaking over here, guys, it's about buoyancy, okay? Buoyancy and density. Gravity, something different. But history has shown that other forces could be combined and many physicists are willing to devote their lives, careers and reputations to the attempt to show that gravity, too, can be expressed quantum mechanically. The consequences of such a discovery, of course, cannot be fully known until a viable theory is proven by experimental evidence. So, guys, of course, you know, obviously we're all humans here. We all thinking we all have minds. But when it comes down to. The consequence of a discovery all comes down to a viable theory that can be proven by experimental evidence. And obviously for all of us together, when I say obviously, we all have to come to some sort of consensus. And that's the only way that we can get there. But uh, right here, guys. So what is the theory of everything? Right. An overview of the theory of everything. Now, before I step into this, obviously you guys are seeing where the narrative is coming from. Space.com, space.com. Now, for you to understand how we're speaking, for you to understand what this channel really represents, we spoke earlier on and about with NASA. You have your stars, quasars, all of that stuff. And trust me, guys, we definitely wanna recommend a certain documents or uh, documentaries when it comes down to it. Um, but when it comes down to like, you know, your space and your uh, unlimited uh, galaxies and all that, what we're really our space over here is what's called Leo or low Earth orbit. Leo, Leo, low Earth orbit. Now, truly what you look up up into the sky and what you really have, the firmament speaks 
of the handiwork of God. You get what I mean? The creator. All right. So if you're listening in and if you trust the universe, if you trust science and if you trust God, all of that has some kind of outer place but what is it are you are you worshiping the creation or are you worshiping the creator so regardless of you know belief and everything the theory of everything or the toe is a hypothetical framework explaining all known physical phenomena in the universe now already from there being a believer you get what i mean it's no theory i just gotta put it out there guys it's no theory over here you know, I I have a physical, I have a framework explaining all known physical phenomena in the universe, all right? But researchers have searched for such a model ever since the development of quantum mechanics and Albert Einstein's theory of relativity in the early 20th century. So really, here's my thing, people, what I'm saying. When revelation comes about, it begins a revolution. Einstein said that he wants to know the mind of God. So from there, this theory of relativity comes about. This caused a revolution. Now our minds can go to new corridors of knowledge. Now the spirit of wisdom can reach new minds. Paradigms can shift, you know. So from there, you had the theory of relativity. They contrived a inking from quantum mechanics from it and then from there you know you can add on things from other theories now each of these pillars of modern physics describes its re respective area of inquiry the very smallest and most massive things in the cosmos so with you get that modern physics they're looking at everything from your quarks atoms protons all the way to your most massive things in the cosmos with astounding accuracy but both quantum mechanics and relativity fail when applied to each other subject matter isn't that interesting you know because it, it, it's 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 funny you know a lot of people or believers truly can see quantum mechanics and think oh no you know that's the devil that's not real or anything but but do you see this how quantum mechanics and this theory of relativity they fail on each other you know each one of these things you have complete accuracy with quantum mechanics but when you apply it to the theory of relativity they fail on each other. So, so far, an overarching theory of everything has eluded scientists and some believe the un, the ultimate goal is unrealistic. Guys, I'm telling you, I'm t <laughs> scientists, that's what they always say until someone discovers something new, until God pushes somebody and then it's discovered. So look at this. This is, I mean, again, a big shout out to Einstein for seriously what he does. Einstein began to search for a unified theory in the 20s, according to American Physical Society. So according to them, the man's obviously been searching for it before then. That's just when you guys found out about it. He had never fully accepted the strange paradoxes of quantum mechanics, and he believed that the math describing electromagnetism and gravity the only two forces known at the time could be combined into a single framework. Look at the next thing he said. I want to know how God created this world. That's what Einstein told a young physics, suit, young physics student named Esther Solomon in 1925. I'm not interested in this or that phenomenon in the spectrum of this or that element. I want to know his thoughts. The rest are just details. This, this is great. So that's what I'm saying, guys. When you pursue him, you get knowledge. When you pursue him, you're honored throughout history. But Einstein's quest proved quiz, quiznotic during his lifetime. Most of my intellectual offspring end up very young in the graveyard of disappointed hopes. Yet he didn't give up. And while on his deathbed, he asked to he asked to have his latest notes on the theory of everything brought to him. Wow. You get that? Einstein believed that a theory of everything would explain how God created this world. So one basic framework that I guess scientists could work off of. Isn't that noble? Isn't that noble? That, of course, Einstein wanted to have a way, a theory, a way that all scientists can come together and see this is how God created this thing. Let us study this creation. What I'm, I'm, I mean, you know how powerful 
the fields of science, the fields of, of education would be if we were all on the same page. No more division. Everyone believing the right way for the right direction for love, peace, joy, hope, wisdom for everybody. We'd be so powerful. So some potential candidates, though, physicists developed the standard model, which has been called the theory of almost everything. It describes the interactions of all known subatomic particles and three of the four fundamental forces, electromagnetism and the strong and weak nuclear forces, but not gravity. So see, instead of interacting gravity in there, let's have electromagnetism and some nuclear forces. A model that also includes gravity would be known as quantum gravity theory. And I think I actually had a paper pulled up for you guys to look at that as well. Uh, some researchers believe that string theory is such a framework and fits the bill for a theory of everything. String theory uh, posits that particles are actually one dimensional string like entities vibrating in an 11 dimensional reality. The vibrations determine the different part, uh, particle properties, such as their mass and their charge. So with string theory, you know, we can even, you know, discuss that, that that has spiritual implications as well. Really, that's all it takes. You know, when you actually get out of the mechanistic, lo uh, logical mind and really think that, you know, humans are at just, you know, machines, bone, uh, skin and everything like that, and that there is no eternal uh, source within it, then you're just you're you're ignoring a whole layer of the study. You're you're ignoring a whole uh, layer of the the actual subject, you know. Uh, but they were saying here, maybe it just doesn't exist. Other scientists consider the idea of string theory as an intellectual dead end. Uh, the theoretical physicist reportedly scolded his colleagues for chasing what he considered an imaginary dream. The basic problem with string theory unification research is not that progress has been slow over the past 30 years, but that it has been negative with everything learned showing more clearly why the idea doesn't work. Interesting. You usually have to look past people like this. This fact does not sadden him, but rather give him hope. I'm now glad that our search for understanding will never come to an end and that we will always have the challenge of a new discovery. Without it, we would stagnate. So, of course, that coming out from uh, Stephen Hawking's. Now, dig this. I want to say something when it comes down to the search for understanding. The search for understanding will never bring peace. OK, you will never gain peace with understanding. All right. Peace comes from the inside. Peace comes from something beyond yourself. So this search for understanding, it's it's insatiable. That's the thing about science. Once you believe that you've discovered something else, now you've discovered another problem. Now you discover something else. So now you have to understand it. And then from there, you're going to put some time in research. That's what I mean. You have graveyards, times, generations of scientists on top of scientists on top of scientists that they've pursued this this quest, this search for understanding, yet they don't receive peace. They have no peace. You know, you, you are, you're just wrapped up, you know, in this theory, you know, you know, family doesn't know you can't connect with your kids, all of that. But it's this search for understanding, you know, and really when you have the search for understanding in the right thing, that's the thing when you're spiritually led, when you have the search for understanding for life, then that thing is going to come right back on you. But if you're constantly searching for understanding in something that's dead, then you get what you put in. You know, whatever you're putting in, you're going to get it back. You know, whatever you're selling, you're going to you're going to get it right back. You're going to reap it. So I wanted to show you guys that so you can learn a little bit more about what's the deal with the theory of everything. Right now, let me show you guys. I think this is another one here. Now, this is this is uh, also going into it uh, about about the theory of everything, the long sought meaning of tying everything together, all known phenomena to explain the nature and the behavior of all matter and energy in existence. My Bible answers that question, <laughs> but in physics, a field refers to an area under the influence of some force. 
refer to yourself i mean an area under the influence of some force that said gravity or electricity for example so a unified field theory would reconcile seemingly incompatible aspects of various field theories to create a single comprehensive set of equations basically a god framework that you have everything else that's going on we will discover this thing but it's going to require spiritual knowledge it will not be logical it will not fully be logical such a theory could potentially unlock all the secrets of nature and make a myriad of wonders possible including such benefits as time travel and an inexhaustible source of clean energy among many others all right so those in pursuit of a unified field theory seek an equation an inch long that would allow us to read the mind of god y'all hear that that's unified field theory that's the reason why i wanted to bring this to you guys today because think about it think about what we're talking about here unified field theory everything that's under an influence what we're saying gravity electricity you uh, everything around you your television your phone your couch everything around you is under some kind of influence so if we actually had them all unified all working together under some kind of framework and then like I'm saying, it really has to be the equations, a framework to where, oh, now you have interoperability amongst the minds. But because you have a debate, because you don't have a viable theory, because this isn't deterministic uh, evidence, now mm, it's kind of, I'm not sure, does it match up, blah, blah, blah. You get me? But something like this, something like this would revolutionize, like we're saying. There's a reason why you're seeing time travel constantly being shown in your movies. You're seeing portals being shown in your movies. You're being prepared for all of this stuff. You know, they want you to have your imagination already prepared for it. If it's going to happen in the generation in the future or not. Now, we really have to ask ourselves, if we start doing time travel, does that change, you know, does that change the whole... Um, you know, the projective perspective of time. And then obviously God's omnipotence, his, you know, that's the thing. If us humans start playing around with time travel and everything like that, he has authority over everything. You get what I mean? You're going to have some bad actors and bad apples that are, you know, might mess some things up, but at the same time, he's, he rules, he reigns, you know? So just interesting stuff, y'all. I mean, clearly, clearly this, you know, if, 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 if they're pursuing this, the like they're saying like they're saying this can unlock all the secrets of nature so uh we we're telling you guys earlier james maxwell proposed the first field theory for electromagnetism in the middle of the 1800s early uh in the 20th century einstein's general theory of relativity dealing with gravitation became the second field theory the term unified field theory was coined by einstein who was attempting to prove that electromagnetism and gravity were different manifestations of a single fundamental field. So I, I honestly agree with him about that because truly, you know, when it comes down to gravity and everything, at least look, my perspective, my, hum my humble opinion that, and I'm, I'm going to keep this kind of, um, kind of keep it simple but that your electromagnetism more so that influence is gravity. You get what I mean? Now, I'm not sitting here, not, you know, like every time that you have electromagnetism is that gravity, but the force, you know, that influence. Uh, so when quantum theory entered the picture, the puzzle became more complex. The theory of relativity explains the nature and behavior of all phenomena on the macroscopic level, things that are visible to the naked eye. That's the theory of relativity. While the quantum theory explains the nature and behavior of all phenomena on the microscopic, atomic and subatomic level. Per, uh, perplexingly, however, the two theories are <laughs> incompatible, which is, <laughs> it's so, you know, it's so interesting because it's weird. Like I was telling you guys, the quantum theory, quantum theory isn't really, um accepted really by the church it's it i think that's uh, quite fascinating that you don't you know that uh quantum theory explaining nature and behavior on a microscopic level oh too much science you know nothing like that but a theory of relativity oh yeah i can get with that i can i can definitely uh 
C, something explaining the nature and behavior of all phenomena on a macroscopic level, right? Because that's what we can, we all want that. You know, once you actually walk through this thing and know that the word, like the word is true, things change. There's so much life, you know, but perplexingly, these two theories are incompatible. Wow. So unconvinced that nature would prescribe totally different modes of behavior for phenomena that were simply scaled differently. Einstein sought a theory that would reconcile the two apparently inconceivable theories that form the basis of modern physics. So although electromagnetism and strong weak nuclear forces have long been explained by a single theory known as the standard model, gravitation does not fit into that equation. The current quest for a unified field theory, sometimes, sometimes called the holy grail of physicists, that's right, is largely focused on superstring theory and in, and in particular on an adaptation known as M-theory. So I think they were talking about that. Right here for y'all. Let me show you guys this with string theory. String theory might be the theory of everything or a flawed framework for theoretical physicists. I mean, talk about it, guys. I mean, <laughs> theoretical physicists, you guys are paid so much to come up with theories, you know. <laughs> but anyway, look at this. So, string theory is the idea in uh, theoretical physicists that or in physics that reality is made up of infin or infinitesimal vibrating strings smaller than atoms, electrons, or quarks. According to this theory, as the strings vibrate, twist, and fold, they produce effects in many tiny dimensions that humans interpret as everything from particular physics to large-scale phenomena like gravity. Uh, so <laughs> string theory has been held up as a possible theory of everything, a single framework that can unify general relativity and quantum mechanics. Uh, while quantum mechanics does very well in describing the behavior of very small things, uh, general relativity works well in explaining how large things happen in the universe, but they don't play nicely. So after string theory gained prominence in the 60s and 70s, its popularity amongst theoretical physicists fluctuated. According to a lecture by John Schwartz, widely considered one of the founders of string theory after countless papers, conferences, and dry erase markers, the breathtaking breakthrough many once hoped for seemed further away than ever. Yowza. So string theory, though, as you guys can see, gravity seems not to exist as a, as a particle of its own. Theorists are predicting what a gravity particle should look like, but when they try to calculate what happens when two such gravitons smash together, they get an infinite amount of energy packed into a small space. A sure sign that the math is missing something. Yeah, y'all, I don't know about that whole gravity thing, but of course, don't jump off your roof. <laughs> All right, so uh, right here, this was a uh, paper I wanted to show you guys, I might leave you all a link, but they were putting some really good stuff out there. I really liked uh, where they were coming from. Uh, all right, I'll show you, this is this is uh, talking about basically uh, unified unified field theory, but scale unification, a, unif a universal scaling law for organized matter, basically exactly that. So this is the abstract, so from observational data and theoretical analysis, we determine that a scaling law can be written for all organized matter util you utilizing the Schwarzschild condition describing cosmology to subatomic structures. Of interest are solutions involving torque, Coriolis effects, and the field, equ uh, field equations. Significant observations have led to theoretical and experimental advances. So yeah, y'all. Hopefully this, uh, yeah, so this is good. So also, I wanna show you guys this. So they were saying in astrophysics, black holes have been ubiquitously confirmed from large scale supergiants such as quasars and galactic centers to smaller stellar sized black hole systems. These new discoveries represent a long-term progress to confirm the 1916 Schwarzschild solution to Einstein's field equations. The observed black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy was first discovered by its gravitational influence on nearby stars. So far, black holes seem to have been found 
at the center of all galaxies that have been carefully examined. Now quasars clusters have been found to host large black holes and stellar black holes are well documented. Y'all, I'm telling you, I'm telling you with all this stuff. In this paper, we have developed a scaling law for the universal galactic stellar solar and atomic scale frequency versus radius of the system. Guys, these scientists with the whole Big Bang cosmogenic parameters. But yeah, guys, I will definitely leave you all a link just, to, just showing you guys where they're looking into this whole thing. So I want to show you as well this, the Resonance Science Foundation. I thought this was fascinating. So you actually have uh, more and more academies, more and more, um, more and more uh, scientists basically that are pretty much working on that unified uh, field theory. So this is the Resonance Science uh, Foundation. Obviously, you can see what all these images they got working on here. Uh, they're really up to some stuff. Uh, I can actually show you guys their video one time so you can learn a little bit more about how they're coming and what they're about. You know, check this out. Everything is connected. Learn to see. Realize that everything connects to everything else. The greatest minds in history have agreed. From the smallest particles through the highest intelligence, the entire universe is connected in ways which we know and feel, but we cannot yet fully explain. However, like those days of old when the world was flat, most humans are still not aware of the recent discoveries in the science of connectedness. But it's only when this awareness rises to a critical point that the full benefits of a connected universe can truly begin to change our world for the better. The science of unity points to a wide range of benefits to come. From a healthier environment to reduce strife and conflict, and even to the dreams of science fiction like unlimited safe energy and interstellar travel. This first requires that enough of us are aware to push for the scientific developments, to fund potentially world-changing projects, to elect leadership that represents a connected worldview, and to bravely stand for a new world of prosperity, peace, and purpose. Resonance Science Foundation is the key to that change to a shift in our collective viewpoint which will help transform the world. We are a one million member strong community that believes everything is connected. We have the science to prove it and the tools to experience it. As a global nonprofit based on Nassim Haramein's unified field theory, the goal of Resonance Science Foundation is to create a world where humanity's technological and social systems are in harmonious relationship with nature, earth, and the cosmos. We bring this worldview to life through three channels, science, community, and consciousness. We are the only organization at the intersection of science, community, and consciousness. And that unique angle has brought incredible results. Resonance Science Foundation is the central hub for all things unified science. The foundation spun out its sister company, Taurus Tech, with a dozen full-time scientists who are publishing cutting-edge science on the connected universe, its benefits, and how to use them. The foundation spun off ARC, a for-profit arm guided to produce usable, proven technology developed from the unified field theory. The foundation's academy is educating delegates globally to spread the science and to shift the worldview. Resonance Science Foundation expeditions are not only changing hearts and minds, but completing research at some of the world's most important historical locations. And most importantly, we're building a community of passionate, educated people who want to make the world a better place, starting with their own lives. The people of the world are begging to be connected. Just think about the one billion plus members of Facebook, or what's still the world's most popular film ever, Avatar. But this can't happen without a few fearless leaders to get behind the cause. For it's only with your help that we can exponentially grow the community. And it's only with community that minds will change, that our consciousness will change, the science will be accelerated, and that we'll create a connected universe of peace, prosperity, and purpose. Invest in the theories and discoveries that will change the world. 
from supercharging water to abundant energy and beyond. Support Resonance Science Foundation. Wow. Good stuff that, y'all. Seriously, good stuff that. Now, I'm seeing here you guys were saying there was some kind of tone in the back. Let me go ahead and fix this up. I don't know if you guys was hearing some kind of tone uh, back here. One second, y'all. Hold up. Yeah, I know you guys were dealing with some kind of tone or anything like that. <clears throat> check, check. Check. Yeah, I'm sure you guys can hear me now. All right. So, yeah, I thought that was fascinating. You know what I'm saying? I thought that was really good. You know, now you saw how they were, uh, you know, trying to say back in the days when when the earth was flat, you know, stuff like that. Where was it? Somewhere in there. You see what I'm saying? You know, back when the earth was flat. But that's what I'm saying, y'all, you know, the connectivity. So I uh, wanted to show you guys that just so we could see some of the. Yeah. So that that scaling unification thing was actually coming out from them, from this Science Foundation, this paper that I was showing you guys, talking with you guys about. Uh, all right. So we covered that now. Also, this one right here, guys, this is actually from the International Atomic Energy Agency. Let me see. Hold up. My bad, y'all. Fix my space. Fix this space. All right, so I thought this was good, y'all. So check this out. This is coming from the International Atomic Energy Agency, right? About International Center for Theoretical Physicists. I like how to just get right into it. The physics of basic interactions now appear to be in a very interesting stage of development. The effort to link gravity with other interactions, electromagnetic, weak or radiate radioactive forces and chromodynamic uh, and chromodynamics have had a spectacular success. So you hear that they're saying that these efforts to link gravity with all of those uh, with electromagnetics, with uh, chromodynamics has had spe a spectacular success. Now, this, I believe, came out. Uh, look at this 1985 okay so we're now talking about a theory of fundamental interactions which could in principle envelop everything super string theory is a theory of gravitation that appears to have a necessary ingredient to serve on the other hand as the proper quantum version of the classical gravity on on the other hand as the basic framework for all matter together with their own strong electromagnetic and weak interaction Long story short, basically, they're saying here that they made this super string, super string theory formulated, I guess, back in 1985. So it makes use of several notions that have been around, such as local gauge symmetry, local supersymmetry and Higgs like mechanisms for spontaneous breaking. It is formulated in space time of four dimensional D4 and the super florist dimensions are supposed to have played a crucial role in the very early stages of the evolution of the universe. And look at this until about 10 seconds after the Big Bang, when temperatures ranged to this subsequently and for most phenomena of both macro and microscopic uh, worlds, these extra dimensions remained compactified at length scales of order long story short there's parts in these interactions that there's parts of these dimensions that weren't affected now um this was the part here i liked historically strings were invoked in the early 70s to explain the excitation spectrum of strongly interact strong interaction particles hadrons hadrons now you guys already know when it comes down to cern CERN is a large hadron collider. Now they already have out front, just not, you know, to get spiritual or whatever, but to really speak the truth, they have Shiva, the God, the destroyer of worlds. They have, you know, right in front of CERN. So what we're talking about here is these hadron particles are strong interaction particles, strongly interact with the electromagnetic field, strongly interact with gravity, if you want to believe in it like that. So, 
Uh, they're saying they became the infinite tower of quantum states of a relatively string and the equal spacing between the levels related to the only uh, dimensional parameters in the problem, namely in string tension, which has the dimensions of energy or in natural units. Uh, the main interest in them was the property of duality of the scattering amplitude of the string interaction. So I, what, what I gather here, guys, what I gather, what they're really trying to say is that in between all of those strings, like we've like we've covered so far, now all of those interactions, they have they have correspondence. But at the same time, in those correspondence, they amplify different properties of the other string. So so obviously it goes on. It tells you, you know, um, equations and whatnot. I'll leave you guys a link if you want to get into that. What was also here all ah, right so the quantum theory of string still suffers from two diseases it possesses a uh, chiral and conformal anomalies and can potentially cause breakdown of energy momentum con uh, conservation and current conservation so right now the quant the this um string theory they're saying there's two problems one that these anomalies can cause breakdowns in the energy momentum and as well in the energy conservation of uh, of energy. So guys, obviously they're just practicing, they're working all this out. Theoretical physicists paid so much, so much to do to make come up with theories. But right here, guys, uh, to really wrap this whole thing up, I really wanted to see this. 12 things the Bible says God knows about us. And one of those things is omnipotence and omnipresence. Now, with all this being said about one single framework, one single framework to explain the nature and behavior of all matter and energy in existence, let's really look at it and see what omnipresence really means. Omnipresence is the property of being present anywhere and everywhere. The term omnipresence presence is often used in a religious context as a attribute of a deity of a or supreme being while the term ubiquity is generally used to describe something existing or being everywhere at the same time constantly encountered widespread and common ubiquitous can also be used as a synonym for words like worldwide universal all over the place or global so omnipotence the um uh, the omnipresence of a supreme being is conceived differently by different religious systems but let's really just look at the actual definition of what we're saying here something that's described as existing or being everywhere all at the same time okay so just riddle me that guys think about it for yourselves if we can actually have right here what the scientists are looking for a unified field theory to reconcile all of these incompatible aspects of various field theories so we can actually have a single comprehensive set of equations there is already a presence like einstein already knew already knew that has authority over everything every kind of quark atom proton electron all of it all of it can be unified through what? A omnipresent creator. You know, you have to come back to source. You have to come back to the creator. If you're the creation, you need to find out your manual, need to find out who created you. You know what I mean? So really good stuff. But look, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and see who's up in here. Check in with everybody who was. Appreciate you guys being a part of this whole thing for real. Real talk that. Let me see who's really up in here in a place to be. You guys enjoying your weekend over here with us i appreciate that you guys definitely have a great weekend lined up you guys definitely have some great things ahead of you especially in your future you guys have a great future ahead hope this thing isn't too fast for you guys i know you guys were feeling a certain way about it last time let's see who's up in here in the place to be still watching and everybody that's tuned in we asked the uh we asked the community what's your opinion on einstein's unified field theory 59 percent said not sure dig that yo dig that okay 
go look at some of these comments gonna check out this chat real quick are up in here drop a you know where you're from definitely drop what's going on for you guys for the weekend let me try to get this chat up for you guys MK's checking in. Appreciate you being up in here, MK. Trying to get this going for you guys. So we can get our chat going. I don't know why it's not working. But yeah, unified field theory, man. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying, y'all. It's it's a fact it is a fact see if this will work for y'all MK checking in appreciate you oh man nah, nah, I don't need that I don't know. You guys were saying there was a tone. I had no idea there was a tone, guys. Didn't even know. Didn't even know. Well, look, man. I don't know why this is tweaking on me. But I can read these comments here. Gary Steele was saying that uh, my voice was low. Didn't even know. Me, myself, was checking in. Am I in the twilight? <laughs> twilight zone. I didn't know there was a tone, y'all. Definitely didn't know there was a tone going on that whole time. Dougie Kid said, this is deep, Ted. Right on, man. Right on. I appreciate that. For real. For real. That uh, unified, unified field theory is something. It points you right to God, in my opinion. It points you right to God. You know? Appreciate you guys being up in here. You guys ask any questions and everything while I get this whole thing set up. Seriously trying to figure this whole thing out with you guys. Uh, but yeah. Ted, you got some you got some background noise. Some background noise? How's that? Sounds relaxing tone. Where was it coming from? Oh, wow. You guys had that tone in the back. Whoa. <laughs> Sounds relaxing tone. No doubt. No doubt. Wow. I couldn't even hear it. Couldn't even hear it. I didn't know there was a tone in the back, y'all. Jeez. Well, that what you guys were hearing. What you guys are hearing right now is 528. 528 hertz so that relaxing tone is true the uh, tone you guys are hearing in the back is actually completely resonant that's exactly what you guys really want to hear actually you know uh, 528 528 but yeah definitely thanks uh relaxing relaxing hip-hop relaxing hip-hop I had no idea you guys were hearing that tone man okay try to fix that out but yeah guys i just wanted to drop that for you guys you know have a discussion everything um what we're going to be doing you know obviously with these whole things i think i'm probably going to be moving these to saturday 
because I really think, um, you know, I want to actually let you guys have, of course, uh, a Friday for crypto. You get what I mean? Everybody's been working. I think it's, you know, obviously what everybody wants to know is happening with their bags and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, sorry about that. But yeah, I'm probably going to be. Oh. Bob Franklin, the tone was only at the very beginning. Really? Yeah, yeah, is this it? There it is. I can't even hear that, y'all. <laughs> but Bob Franklin, I appreciate you being in here checking in, you know, on a on a Friday like that. That's definitely a 528, 528 hertz, guys. Definitely 528 hertz. Man, I wish I could have the chat up so I could hang out with y'all. Um trying to figure this out, trying to get the thing to pop up, but it's not trying to work with me, y'all, you already know what it is when we start talking the truth out here, you know things get to start acting all wonky on us, when everybody's starting to learn the truth, Psh, bullocks, I'm not going to stress out, you guys definitely enjoy your weekends though, guys. I'm probably going to wrap this one on up, but I uh, seriously appreciate you guys being up in here. Play the replay and everything. It was a good one. I think this is a really good one. We're going to keep this up. I really enjoyed it, you know, doing this whole thing with you guys. I didn't know you guys had that tone in the back and everything, but it's all good. You already know what it is. Uh, we're going to keep you guys up to date. Consider joining us over on Patreon, guys. If you really like how we're talking over here, if you really like the uh, level of depth of where we go in this whole thing, join us over on Patreon. If you guys have any uh, wanting to learn any access to us, obviously you have that. Join this channel, guys. Join this channel. Um, we treat our members right. What well, obviously we want you guys to be educated and everything, but at the same time, we want you guys to be able to understand cryptocurrency in an easy and fun way. We want you to understand, you know, um, more than what the masses are really being fed. You get what I mean? We want this community to be something that's different, you know, something a little special, something that, you know, you guys are taking in knowledge and taking in wisdom in the right way. You guys are checking in over here on Friday night or it could be Saturday morning, wherever you are. But I really do appreciate you guys actually being in here and wanting to listen uh, on this time. But you guys go ahead and enjoy your weekend. Uh, you know, like I said, this tone that you guys are hearing in the back is 528, 5, um, 528 hertz. Um, check out our channel, Medicated Melodies, as well, um, if you guys want to learn a little bit more about what's going on with us. But all right, guys, I'm, uh, I'm going to wrap this one on up. I'll holler at you later. Peace.